okay so in previous class we have already seen that methods how to declare the methods methods overloading right so what is method overloading the same method with the different parameters are called as method overloading right and today we'll see that yesterday we have seen that only the methods overloading without return types right today we'll see that methods with return types okay methods with return types okay here let me create a new apex class called as calculation okay i'm not going to declare any variables here okay i'm just writing methods like public the the return type is integer okay add of two numbers and let me declare two integer variables like as public integer a b okay i'm doing with this when i use that return so integer i should use the return statement if i use the return type other than the void if you use void you don't need the return statement if you use other than this void then you should use the return statement okay now what i'm doing is integer result equals to a plus b okay i have the results then you should use the result statement result sorry return result when you should uh, return the statement when you have the return type other than the void and then returning value should match with this data type okay here you have declared the return type as integer and if you are trying to return the string then it won't be allowed it throws the error message show that you should return with the same data type okay so otherwise so here what i have done i have calculated the a plus b and stored into the third variable and third variable i am returning right instead of storing the value in the third variable you can directly use this as well okay so that calculates there and return the value okay now here let me execute this what we are doing calculation c equals to we should uh, use the constructor to create the object calculation okay and then you should pass the value c dot a equals to 20 c dot b equals to 50 then you should use the method as this is the instance method you should use the object okay and it is returning some value that means it is giving some value so we should take that value right so that's optional not a mandatory but we should take the value as of now so what is the value it is returning integer type of value it is returning right so that we should store the value in this one integer result equals to c dot add okay what happens whatever the value it is returning this method is returning some value by calculating a plus b then the result i am storing into this variable okay now let me debug this system dot debug of result 
Okay? Let me execute this. Okay? So here, this is result. Okay? So what is happening when you use this result or return statement? It is giving some value to us. We should take that value into any other variable. That's optional. You can take into some other method or something else. But this should be mandatory. Okay? And let me use another one. Public integer subtract I'm using here. Okay? The same values. What I'm doing is return a minus b. Okay, integer a minus b. The same way you can use this. Okay, this is very simple and basic thing here. Let's see here. It is giving 30 right see here we have set the value a value is 20 b value is 50 okay we have initiated first the values then we use the addition with the same values so it's give 20 plus 50 70 and in the second one the same values has been subtracted right what is that we have used a minus b 20 minus 50 equals to minus 30 the same result has been given here. Okay? Now, if you want your own values here, then what you have to do is, you can create your separate object here. C1. Then call the C1. And here you can set the value. C1 dot A equals to 100. C1 dot B equals to 50. So now, if you execute that, these values can be calculated in this subtraction. Okay, so here this is, here it is 70 and 50. So this is how it will be calculated like this. Okay, so this is an example to return your value. You can return any type of value. Okay, you can return any type of value whether it is integer or string or date or date time whatever you want to return you can calculate and return the same value back okay this is one thing this is with the return type okay the methods you can declare with the return type okay now So the return type should be given when there is a return type other than the void. If you don't declare the return type as void, then you should have the return statement at end of the method. And even there is one more important point is here. Here. Uh, when you have used the return type other than void, and after return statement, you should not write anything. It won't allow. Okay? Let's say that if I use something, it throws the error message. Okay? It won't compile itself. Unreachable statement. What is unreachable statement? Here, here we are saying that, here we are returning. Returning means, execute the business logic which is before the return statement and then return the result back that's it okay so that it won't come here because it is returning from here itself okay so that is called as unreachable statement you should not write any code after the return statement okay so this is about the return thing
okay and as of now we have seen the class how to create the class okay syntax of the class and different access modifiers we have seen that static keyword we have seen that and then this keyword we have already discussed okay and creation of object we have created the object as well okay then we have seen the constructors constructors we have seen the default constructor then parameterized constructor then we have seen methods in the methods uh, we have seen static methods and instance methods there are only two types of methods one is instance method another one is static methods then again we have seen the variables as well okay and the variables we have local variables instance variables and static variables okay and before that we have seen that loops and conditional statements okay loops nothing but while do while and for conditional statements or if if else if else if and if else if else okay so that was nested if that's what we have discussed in everything okay and we have seen that data types as well okay if no questions let's go to the another topic this is very much important topic be careful on this okay the class concept is not over yet we'll discuss later so we have different types of classes abstract class virtual class then we have interfaces we'll discuss them don't need to worry and before that we have to discuss some collection data types these are very much important okay collection data types without this collection data types you can't write any code okay the most important things are collection data types we have different three types of collections here first one is list second one is set and third one is map okay list first thing and before going to discuss about these three what is a collection what is a collection anyone yes a collection is a group of members or we can say that group of elements or we can say that group of things okay so here a list is a list is an ordered collection of elements okay a list maintains tains index based order and list allows the duplicate elements okay and one important point is any primitive data type like as integer string or whatever it is everything is is like as an object okay and collections allows to store only objects okay collections allow only objects to be stored okay and here a list is a class list is a class set is a class and map is a class everything is a class we know that we if whenever we are saying that it is a class inside the class we can have the methods instance methods static methods and variables we can have it and we have constructors as well right a, a, a class is the collection of data types like as variables methods and constructors 
right so list set map three or classes so when we are saying that these are classes to operate anything we should create an object because this list set map doesn't have any static methods or static variables everything is a instance variables and instance methods we don't have any variables as well we have everything as method okay instance methods when we are saying that instance methods to call any method you should use the object right you should use the instance or object to call any method okay to operate anything we should use the thing so list set map three or collections and three or classes okay and here how to create an object for the list we know that how to create the object the class name space variable name equals to new later constructor right the same way we have to create the object for that okay. creating an object for the list okay we just use list l equals to new list okay and so this is the normal way of creating an object for each and every class right but when we are saying that collection we have to define that so we know that what is a collection a collection is a group right a group of elements or here we can say that a group of objects right so if you are saying that an object okay when you have declared that uh, public integer a then a is an object for integer class and its access access modifier is public okay here when we say that public integer a okay here a is an object for integer class and that access modifier is public this is what we have to understand so each and every variable is also an object for the particular class okay we know that so in this one when we are declaring a list or set or map what we have to say that what type of data we are going to store into that collection let's say i want to store the integers let's say numbers or i want to store the string or i want to store the different dates whatever it is for that what we have to do is we have to declare the data type this is what we have to do so the syntax should be like this list and then less than or greater than symbols there inside that we have to declare the data type then new and then list data type okay this is the way of creating an object let's say that i will tell you that one example to you if i want to store the numbers list i'm using integer of l equals to new list of integer okay this is how we have to create an object for the collection object called list okay collection type called list now once it is done what we have to do okay so we are saying that list is a order an ordered an ordered collection of elements what is an element everything is an element okay whenever we are saying that if i want to store 1 to 100 1 to 10 then one is an element two is an element three is an element everything is an element okay now i want to add an element to the list what i can do is l dot add of number okay let's say if i give one i directly test that because one is integer 
okay as we have declared this as integer then it allows right as we declared the data type as integer and we have given the one as integer to add into the list so it will add if i add one more l dot add of two or three you can do anything l dot add of 50 it will be added it will be in the order okay let me execute one here list of integer l equals to new list of integer okay now let's see l dot add of 10 l dot add of 30 l dot add of 50 okay so this can be added one by one okay now see that system dot debug list having values is l and let's execute this Here it is first I have added 10 second I have added 30 say third one 50 so in whatever the order I have added the elements into the list object in the same order it is there right so we have seen that okay I have in the same order 10 30 50 the element index starts from 0 okay whenever you add the first element it will be in the 0th position in second position the first position will be in this one so 10th position is 0 30th position is 2 first 1 and 50, 50th 50 values position is 2 0 1 2 it means number of values minus 1 is the size i mean index okay so 0 1 2 this is index okay now let's see the so you can have a doubt that so we are saying that add method is already there so list class we have not created yet right that is already defined one in the sales force okay so list class has been defined and it is the basic class from the salesforce okay it's a collection class here in this class we have all the methods we should know what are the methods we have so that we can use whenever we need it right let's see what are the methods we have You can see that uh, Apex developer guide also. There also you can find the same replica is here. Okay, here it is. What are the constructors we have? We have here three constructors, right? So the first constructor is list of data type. T means data type. Okay, here list of data type. This is what we have used just now. Let's see that list and type is data type integer i have given so that it allows only data type to add into this right and another way we have list data type and list to copy here what is list to copy it means if you have another list here let's say that i have one list called l okay and i need to create with create one more list list dot integer l1 equals to new list of integer so if i give like this it creates empty list right 
there are no values but if i give this l what happens whatever the values are already there in this list that list we are giving here so it copies the values from this list and it puts into the l1 as well okay so that is the syntax here list to copy whenever you give this whenever you pass the another list the elements which are in this list all the elements will be added into the new list okay that is the use of this and we have set as well you can give the set also to copy into that that is also another collection i'll explain that and then we have different methods okay what are the methods we have let's say that add of element if you want to add an element into the list then you can use add okay when you say that add when you say that add at first time then the element whatever you have given that will be stored in the 0th position when you add an element at second time that will be stored in the first position okay so that is the list functionality add okay and that next we have add index element okay here we have seen that 0 1 2 right the positions are 0th position first position and second position okay now here you can see that we have already seen that uh, 10 30 50 is came by default now if i want to add the another value at first position okay first position's value is 30 now i don't want 30 value at first position so what i can do is l dot l dot add of 1 and i am giving 100 now what happens first it adds the value 10 30 50 so that it will be in the 0th position first position and second position when i add the particular element at particular position then what happens is this 30 value which was in the first position will come to the second and second one will move to the third okay just try that here it is 10 100 30 50 so when we say that this method you can add a particular element at specified index position okay then we have add all what is add all here so here l1 object has been created but there are no values right because we have created a new object with empty right so now if i want to add all the elements into this object or this list instance from the another list or set you can add like this okay now what happens first this list would be created and this list is having four values i have created another list with empty later i have added add all of this list not debug l2 is l1 okay let's see that l1 here execute this here it is whatever the values are there on list particular first list and all are added to the second list using the add all you can add an elements from another set as well i'll explain the set as well you can see later okay so this is how the all the methods add add to the particular index and then add all from the list okay then we have clear what is the clear we know that the term itself it is saying that clear clear means just remove all the values okay if you put like this l dot clear then 
there will be no values in this particular list it removes all the values nothing other than that execute no elements are there because we have already removed the elements from this list so the values will not be available okay that is the list dot clear and we have clone what is the clone just duplicate like as xerox okay how to use that here instead of this what you can do is l dot clone okay l dot clone what happens it has the four elements then it will be cloned so that the xerox copy of this l will come into the l2 so will be four values already there okay later on that i have added l again okay so first four values will be there in the l1 and second again you have adding the l again so four plus four eight elements will be there in this second list because when we say that list allows the duplicates right so that whenever you add the element duplicate element any number of times it allows and it takes and store that that's why it is index based just execute this see that 10 100 30 50 10 100 30 50 10 100 30 50 okay if you add one more time like as add all if you add one more time then it will be added four more elements how many times you have added that many times it will add all the elements to the list okay that's called as r add all and clone okay deep clone it's not required then we have equals okay if i want to check that if i want to check that if both l1 equals to l then i used to check the equals method then why we use the equals because whenever you want to check l one list with another list one list with another list then you can use equals execute all elements should be in the same order and same elements so that it gives the true otherwise it gives the false i'm adding four more elements and just try to execute it is false because in first list we have four elements in second list we have eight elements so that it's not equals okay then okay so till now what we have seen that we have just added the element and we have cloned the element we just cleared it right and we have seen that whether it is equals or not now we'll see how to get an element from the list okay so i have this list okay now i want to get one particular element from the specified location okay so 0 1 2 3 okay now what i am doing a if you want to get an element from the particular location what is the data type in the list integer you can use integer what is the number you want zeroth element let's say zeroth equals to l dot get of whenever you want from the specified location you have to give the index okay now you can print that zero nth here zeroth element is 10 if you want to get an element then that will be there okay let's say that i have 
if I give 4, what happens? It throws an exception called list index out of bound exception. Okay, so it is out of the boundary. So we have only four elements and the index will be 0 to 3 only. When you are trying to access the fourth position element, there are no elements there so that it throws the error message. Even if you want to set or add an element also, that will throw the error message if you are out of the bound exception. Okay, get a subject type, it will come in the triggers, hash code is not required and is empty. Okay, what is is empty? Now, if I want to check whether the list is having any elements or not, this is very much important uh, method, you should know that. Okay, so what is whether the list is having value or not? Okay, let's say that I'm going to is empty. So, what I have to do is whether list is having any elements or not, then I can use like this is empty. It returns true or false. That's all. Nothing other than it. It returns true or false. If the if the list is having any elements, it returns false. And if list doesn't have any element, then it returns true. Okay. Just execute this. As we have some elements into that, then it should return false. Okay, it is false. That's the is empty. So now, if my condition is if there is no element in the list, then only I have to add a particular element. Then what I have to do is I have to check that whether the list is empty or not. Like that, if l dot is empty. then only I have to add an element like this L dot add of 30. Okay. And if you want to add an element, if the list doesn't have any element, then you can, you should use the is empty in condition. And let's say that if I, if I want to add an element, if the list is not empty, then you should use this not L dot is empty and you have used that not so that if the list is not empty then only the value will be added into the list otherwise it will be ignored okay now let's say that I'm just printing these so first 10 30 50 100 will be added again we are adding one more element if the list is not empty right so here it is list is not empty because we have already added four elements now the 30 also will be added just try this okay it's added that is is empty we have to use okay iterator it's not required then remove we have remove what is the remove let me i just want to add i just need to remove an element from this specific index index and this specified index then i can use l dot remove of one or let's say that two what happens zero one two so 30 will be in the second position right because we are adding 100 in the first position after that so that 30 will move into the second position right now I want to remove the element from 2 so that 30 should not be available okay once it is added again 30 will be added but it will be in the different order just execute that here it is 10 then 100 after that we should have the 30 but we have removed that from the second position. So when we remove that from the third position, 50 comes to the second position. Okay, then 30 will be added. Okay, that's called remove. When you want to remove an element from the particular specific index, then we can use the remove. Okay, 
now again we have another thing set okay we have the same syntax set of index and list element add of index and list element right what is the difference between add and set add means it adds an element set means it replaces the element okay i'll explain that when you add the element so 30 is not removed right 30 is moved to the second position clear 30 is moved to the second position and 100 is set into the first position right when you set an element l dot set of 0 and i am saying that 200 now what happens at 0 position 10 should be there right when you add the element at 0 position then 10 will come to the first position clear right that is the add functionality and when we say that set what happens is at 0 position whatever the value is there it replaces that value okay okay so 10 will be removed and 20 will be added there replacing that's all set means just setting the value at that particular uh, position okay just execute these and now 10 should not be there see that 200 is there that is the set and then we have size what is the size size is nothing but how many elements we have it's not the position elements number of elements here we have 1 2 3 4 and then 5 because 200 is we are setting only we are not adding so only how many 1 2 3 4 5 size will be 5 see that l dot size and here if you observe that each and every time we are using object right list object we are using because all are instance methods only you should create the object and then only you can use this here it is size is 5 index is size minus 1 because it is starting from 0 size means number of elements how many elements are there inside the list then we can say that is the size okay now we have one more method called as sort so here we if you see that 10 30 50 100 and let me remove this okay uh, i will add it later so whatever the order you have then it will be added like this okay and i'm adding like this after 100 okay 10 150 execute this oh it is just printing size only right let's remove this removing this execute see here 30 100 10 50 30 it is in different order right if you want to use that in the specific order then you can just say that l dot sort after sorting execute this what is the order it is having 10 30 30 50 100 it's in the ascending order that is called sort so you should by hat all these methods with syntax okay you can use class name as the data type as well and then you can create the object for the particular class and add into the list that allows okay that's about list we have one more collection type called as set right we have list set and map okay let's say set what is a set a set is an unordered collection of elements list is an ordered collection set is unordered collection 
okay there will be no order in the set there will be no order if you add the element at last that will be in specific in the different place there is no specific order for the list i mean sorry set okay list has a specific order set doesn't have any order and list allows the duplicates set doesn't allow the duplicates if you had 30 again if you had 30 first one will be overridden okay there will be no duplicates allows into the set okay so be careful we will see the methods one by one and the syntax is also like the same set and data type okay yes equals to new set of data type Okay. This is the default syntax and we have same as list and set as well. Where is this? Here it is. Set. Set of data type. First one. And set of another one. We have seen that list of you can pass another list to the constructor directly right the same way you can pass another set another list as well okay now let's see the first thing set i'm using string now string i'm using names equals to new set of string names dot add add it first names dot add of draw it as use this names dot add of okay now let's use system dot debug the same syntax add okay now here we have the methods add of element okay first one and add all we have add all what is add all add all means add the all the values which are in the another collection like a set or list let's say i have I have a list with duplicate elements. List allows the duplicate, right? I have added 30, 30, 30, thrice. And then I have 30, 40, 50, 60. And I have 30 thrice, right? If I add that list into the set, only one 30 will be added into the set because set doesn't allow the duplicates. Okay? 130 and then 40, 50, 60 will be added into the set. Okay? Be careful. And if you add... Uh, one set into another set the values will be added there okay we have already seen that list right we have added another list into the one list right and if you have the set with 30 40 50 and you have another set with the same values 30 40 50 and you use it that set to dot add all of s1 set one and which is having same values so how many values will be there i use this in the first one i have three values in the second one i have three values i have added finally i am adding again how many values will be there in the names one how many three only because it doesn't allow the duplicates Right? Even if you add that, this will be overridden and only Bangalore, Hyderabad, Kadapa only will be available on this. You can see that as well. You should understand that with it's doesn't, it doesn't allow duplicate means if you add duplicates, it will be ignored. Okay. Let's see that. Bangalore, Hyderabad, Kadapa. Only set doesn't allow the duplicates. 
that is add all and clear you have already seen that if you use the clear the all the values which are in that set will be removed and then we have clone we have already seen that just xerox and then we have contains this method we don't have in the list the methods called as contains and contains all doesn't have in the list and we have in the set okay and okay so now what is contains okay now i want to check whether the first one value is available in this set or not okay if the value let's say that system dot debug okay I want to check whether TPT value is available in this set or not. Then what we can do is names dot contains. Contains means whether it is having or not. Then we can simply say that TPT. Okay. Now the TPT value is not added into the set, so that it returns false. Right? Just check that. it's not available and if you check for the kdp it will be available it's there in the set so it returns true right now if i want to add tpt if it doesn't have then i can just check like this if not names 1 dot contains tpt so then i want to add names 1 dot add of tpt okay now what happens if the tpt is not available in this set then only it adds here we know that right contains if it is not contains then it add into this if it contains remove it just ignore it you don't need to worry okay now here system dot debug tpt available is now it is added into the set so that will be available so it returns the tpt what is it name star we have to check with the names one only we just execute now it is true okay this will be added if you want to check like that you can use this so why i am telling these two methods is empty and then the contains okay these will be used in the uh, triggers very much useful and this will be used very frequently okay so i'm just using those methods and showing there here okay that is contains and then we have contains all okay if you want to check one set is having three elements and another set is having 30 elements if you want to check if these three elements which are in the set 1 are available in the set 2 or not then you can use contains all let's say that i'm using use this contains all of names it means if the names one is having all the elements which are available in the names or not if the elements which are specified in the names one names bangalore hyderabad kadapa if these three elements are already available in this names one then it returns true otherwise it returns false this is also will be 
useful in the programming. As the three values are already available in the set 1, so that it returns true. Okay? Otherwise, it returns false. It is nothing but you are checking one collection of elements with another collection of elements. If this another collection of elements is having the elements from the collection 1, so it returns true, otherwise it returns false. Okay, That is contains all and you can set compare with the set or list as well. Okay, Then equals we have already seen that, is empty we have already seen that and remove. So when you see that remove syntax is different for the list and set. Okay. For list, you have to pause the index, right? Whenever you pause the index, then the specified index element will be removed from the list. And if you want to remove the particular element from the set, you have to pause the set object. It means element you have to pause. Why we have to do like that? In the list, we are pausing index and set we are pausing element. Why? Because in list duplicates are allowed. Let us say I have 30 in the 30 value in the 0th position, 3rd position and 5th position. If I want to remove the 3rd position element which is 30 and the 30 is available on 0 and 5th position also. If I want to remove the element from the specified index so that I have to pass the index in the list. But in the set one element in the only is allowed, right? Duplicate does not allowed duplicates are not allowed so that you can pass the direct element so that that element value will be removed so you can use names one dot remove of you can pass directly kdp now that value which is kdp will be removed from the names one Okay, see here. Now it returns false. Okay, so that has been removed. That is called as remove. And remove all list of objects. You can pass one set to another set to remove the, all the elements from that. Okay, that you can try. No issues. Retain all, it is not much important. Okay. Once you remove the elements and you can retain them, so it means again it will be restored. That is the use of that. And we have size as well. Size we know that how many elements if we have in the collection. So that it returns the size. 